Now, more than 200 people are still being held hostage by Hamas. One of them is Haim Perry from a southern, in southern Israel. Ever since Hamas took him, his daughter, Noem, has been on a mission. She went to Washington, where she and other families of hostages lobbied U.S. officials to put pressure on Hamas to release their loved ones. Noam joins us from just outside Tel Aviv. Uh, Noam, thank you for joining us on the program today. I know this must be a difficult time for you, so we truly appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It, it is a difficult time, but it's very important for us to be able to share the story directly with the world. Thank you for doing that. Maybe first, can you take us back to October 7th and how that all played out? So October 7th, early morning, started as another round of missile attacks for my, for my parents. And I think it's something, again, that the world should understand, that my parents are living through this in all recent years, in a way that on some random Saturday morning, Hamas is, uh, is firing missiles on them, on civilian, all civilian uh, uh, community like their own. And this Saturday morning started like this on 6.30. They went to the safe room, hiding from, from missiles. And we were still able to text them uh, on those uh, first hours, uh, hearing they're OK, but hiding in, in, in the safe room. But soon after uh, morning hours went through, it became something very different from uh, previous times. We now know that dozens of terrorists has invaded the peaceful community where my parents live. And what they did this, there in, in those hours was just, there's no word to describe it without, that is not a terrifying massacre. They just went house by house, butchering people, burning houses, killing parents, killing kids, and kidnapping people. Among them is my father, who is hiding in the safe room with my mother. And your dad? My father is old. Yeah. Apologies for the delay there. Your dad confronted the terrorists when they broke through the safe room door, correct? Yes. So my father is almost 80. But mm. when he heard the terrorists breaking the room, the door of the safe room, he just did his only last result was to push the terrorist away with his own bare hands. And the terrorist has run away for just a few minutes, and it enabled my mother to hide just beneath, behind him, one or two meters away. And by doing so, my father saved her life, because when the terrorist came back with Becca, they didn't saw her. And they took my father, and she was saved, and she's with us safe because of that bravery that your father showed. And I wanted to make sure to share that part with our viewers because, wow, that was super strong of him. How is your mother doing? My mother is also very strong and he, she's the chairman of the community, of their community. And system, since the minute she was released, she's, de she's devoted all her time to help and, and build the community again and help all those people who, who are survivors of these horrific, horrific acts. What kinds of conversations did you have in the United States? So we spent, uh, I spent uh, uh, three very condensed days in Washington together with Raoul Wallenberg Center for Human Rights. And we've met dozens of Congress uh, representatives and senators. And honestly, we've, we've seen tremendous support and willingness to, to fight this together. And we heard from them that releasing all hostages is first priority for them and should be first priority uh, for anyone in the free world. Now, it was a Canadian... Can... Oh, apologies. I'm sorry about the delay yeah. there, ma'am. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But it was a Canadian organization that reached out to try to help you, correct? Yes. 
they reach out to Israeli families because they have experience uh, and knowledge with these kinds of situations, which is honestly, uh, you, you don't you don't know how to deal with it as a family who just who just fall into this horrible situation. Now, you are also seeing hostages being slowly released or rescued. We saw today uh, one yes. private being rescued, along with videos from Hamas. And they're posting these videos of people held captive. When you see these types of things, tell us what your reaction is to that. First, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy uh, for every person who gets released. And I'm even really happy to see some of them who I didn't know are alive. Some of the, I know personally uh, some of uh, some of the women who was released, and uh, and one of the women that was on the video today. And it's just such a relief to see that they're alive. And and alongside it creates tremendous urgency for all of us to act. And, and to make sure they're released, because we don't know how much time they will survive. You know the women, two of the women in this photo we're showing now. I know one of the women in this photo, and I know the two women that was released last week. Okay. Wow. Uh, so much. You're showing so much strength, and thank you for telling these stories. One of the things I want to ask you is, you know, there is an intensive ground offensive underway. It is intensifying as we speak. Does this make you fear more for your dad because of this uh, ground invasion that is growing? We don't sleep for three weeks already. Mm. And we have, we're fearing for my father for three weeks. And I don't honestly think that the ground invasion changes things so much. It depends on all parties to get them released now. And, and, and the strong uh, actions of both international uh, communities, the United States, Canada included, and I know the prime minister today has have met families from your all specifically. Uh, and it, it depends on all of us to make them released. What's your message to your dad right now? Hold on. We all believe in you. And you, you'll get home to be with us soon. We are praying that happens as well. Thank you for sharing this story today. Very important to hear. Nam Perry, thank you kindly. Thank you for having me.